All right, good morning, church. Welcome to the best place to be on a Sunday morning. Yes, in Phaeton Street, Upper Coomera, where the, the Spirit of God comes and visits us every week. Hey, yeah. this is, it's been, there's been some real sweet presence of the Lord just the last few weeks, and this uh, prayer time and this uh, time of worship, and people praying for each other, hearing miracles, hearing people getting healed, and stuff like that. That's just incredible, man. It's just it proves today that God still moves today. Uh, it didn't stop. It didn't cease. Okay, you can't give me that excuse or based on one scripture. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Okay, and he for, he should be greatly exalted. Now, if you have your Bibles, and I hope you got your Bibles or you got your smart devices or whatever, I prefer. I'm old fashioned. I love the book because I can write in it. Yeah, there you go. Please turn with me Galatians chapter 5 verse 1. Now, I haven't got a title message for this for the first time ever. I've actually had three titles. First, I was going to talk about the fear of the Lord. Then I was going to talk about fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And then the third one I was talking about being entangled with sin. <laughs> Now, after the week that I've had this week, and I've had a cracker of a week, man, I'm telling you, it's kind of all rolled into one. And so I don't know what to call it yet. I've still got no idea. Maybe someone can come up with a title at the end of it. Let me know. We'll, we'll, we'll use that, okay? But Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. And do not, everyone say, do not. Be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. You have become estranged from Christ. You, who had attempt to be justified by the law, you have fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything, but faith working through love. Okay? Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning in the name of Jesus. We come boldly into your throne room of grace. Father, I just ask for your grace and mercy in this time of need. Holy Spirit, I talk to you and I ask you to give me the right words to speak. This is an honor to share your word. Lord, I understand that, Lord, I will be judged strictly by the words that I speak. Father, it's a privilege. This is an honor. And, Lord, I ask, Lord, just, I ask you, Lord, please touch people's lives through the words that you want me to say this morning. And I give you all the praise and I give you the glory and I rely upon you this morning in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. All right. I'm a dog lover. I love dogs and I love cats. Sorry, Pastor Simon. I know Simon doesn't like cats, but I do. All right. I love cats. I love dogs. All right. And I reckon every dog owner should have a dog like Patch. Patchy boy. He's cool. He's super cruisy. He's great. Macy, on the other hand, yeah, I'm talking about you. I, I, don't, I don't know what doggy planet she lives on, mate, but it's not the right one. <laughs> now, I'm telling you right now, and you all should know by now, that, that Macy is not the sharpest dog in the kennel. No, she's not. <laughs> we, I've, had a, I've had a busy week. I've had the most intense week. I've been getting up about quarter to four. I'm out the door by 4.30, and I haven't been coming home until about 8.30, 9 o'clock at night. Yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been full on. We've been helping Mel move uh, stuff into storage and getting, uh, getting ready. She had to fly to New Zealand, and she sends her love to you, and she says thank you for praying for her. She loves you guys, and she misses you. Okay, she really does. But... <laughs> We, we decided, well, Mel decided, let's put it that way. I can say that because she's not here. But, um, but <laughs> yeah, if she watches it, she decides to spoil the dogs. So I'm at work 
and she comes in and uh, she came in here during the day to let the ch chooks back in. She bought the dog some leads, bought some doggy water bottles, and she thought she'll bring them to work. And they'll come with us while we're moving house or moving stuff into storage because we've been working late at night. So they've been hanging out with us. They've been having a great time. I'm in the truck, Patch is with me. Macy's in the Mazda with uh, Mel and she's just having a great time, snoring away, getting up every time she gets up. You know, Macy's like a dog that's con constantly on Red Bull all the time. <laughs> Seriously, she's just, there's no chill factor with the dog. She's just like, go, 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 go. They've got buzzer collars. You know, when they bark, they're supposed to sit, not that they don't hurt them, they're electric, and they're just a buzz to so stop them from barking. It doesn't work with it. It's, I think it triggers it the opposite direction. <laughs> she just helps and barks. Anyway, I'm sitting there. One night, we, it, was, it, was a, it was a couple of nights ago. And by the way, Simon's going to know about this, so you can't dob me in. All right? <laughs> yeah, she's looking pretty chilled now, doesn't she? Yeah. But, but anyway, we, we're in the truck. Now, imagine this. We pull up. I've got a truckload full of gear. I'm unloading her bed, Mel's bed, and pieces of timber. Patches on the front seat. He's just cool, man. You know, he's, he's, he's just sitting there. He's looking out the window thinking, this is really cool. This is great, you know. So sweet, you know. Macy, on the other hand, now they're in their doggy seatbelts, right? They're in their doggy seatbelts attached to their collars. Macy wakes, Macy wakes up. She jumps on the edge of the, wind, uh, the, the, the car window and she's like, wow, this, what's going on? This is cool, you know. And I'm sitting there picking up stuff and I thought, don't you jump out of that car. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Now, you think that the dog would have figured out by now that they haven't got a lot of length, so if she jumps, it's, <laughs> it's, it, she won't be able to do it. No. No. I, I pick up a big piece of timber, I turned around, and here's Macy hanging out by the neck of a car. <laughs> like this climbing dog. I'm throwing down a pickup, putting down there. And she's sitting there and she's like, like as if like, like this was great fun. It's like, can I do it again? It's like, I'm serious. This dog is just like a totally different, different kettle of fish. I'm telling you, <laughs> this morning, I, the dogs go out and I had the door open and obviously I didn't have it open far enough so they couldn't get back in. So Macy's walking in and butting her head against the door and it didn't work. And then she does it again. <laughs> <laughs> does it again and i'm sitting i'm just standing over there going seriously dog you, you haven't figured out you can't get in and then she she chaps it with a paw and walks away and i just open the door I, I just closed it a little bit too much but she's but the thing was with macy right is that she should have known that she didn't have enough length she knew if she if she was going to jump you'd think the common sense would kick in for the dog that that she was going to end up hanging herself and, and she did the, and she did it. And thankfully, I was there. Actually, we both were there. You know, Mel goes inside. The, right, we're both there. We're keeping an eye on them. And luckily, I turned around. Now we all have a laugh and stuff like that. But if I didn't happen to be there and leave them unattended, it could have been a very different outcome. All right. But see, the thing is, folks, this is what we do with sin. We do the same thing with sin. We, have, we, we tend to like um, justify our sinful behaviour sometimes when someone tells us a crass joke or we tend to um, know we shouldn't go down a path that we shouldn't go, but we do. And what happens, like with Macy, we get entangled again and we stay in it until it snuffs us out. This past week, it's been an absolute shocker. I'm telling you right now. I have... Um, I. My walk with the Lord has been fantastic. The Lord's been taking me deeper and deeper into Him, deeper into the reverence and the fear and the love of God. And it's been, and I've been seeing things happen in my life that I've been praying for, and it's been great. This week, it's been the totally opposite. I have a guy at work. I work for a Christian organization, right? And we have all sorts of people work there gay people, straight people, transgender people, um, you know, people with crass personalities and stuff like that. We've got one particular guy, and, and by all rights, he's a, he's a great guy, a lovely guy, and he starts, but when he comes up, he starts telling Jake, and it's, it's a crass joke, it's a crass one. 
And he said something, you know, well, twice this week, and I just went, <laughs> I giggled and I shook my head, and then I realised, you know, I shouldn't have laughed at that. That's not me. Normally I'm quick on the defence, and they know that. And I'm sitting there going, and it's just sin is so subtle. Sin is so subtle. It appears to be good. It appears to feel good. And then what happens is that next thing you know, you've entangled yourself into something that you're finding hard to get out of. And it could be anything. It doesn't have to be the most obvious thing. When we talk about sin, we tend to go towards the sexual nature. It's, people don't realize that sin is so seductive. And then if you start opening the door into one, it's like a domino effect. You sort of start walking in other areas of your life that is not holy and it's not righteous. And next thing you know, you're going down the tube spiritually. You're starting to walk in the flesh and you start lashing out and you're realizing how far away from God that you truly are. Now, we know the Bible says in, in, in Corinthians that he is joined into the Lord as one spirit with the Lord. We know in, in Romans chapter 8, in the last two verses, it says that nothing can separate us from the love of God. We know there's no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. But it doesn't mean we still get convicted when we fall short of his glory. Okay? And that's a gift, folks. That's not condemnation. That's a gift. If we start feeling condemned, we're either doing it to ourselves or the enemy's doing it to you. Okay? We know that, right? But I'm sitting there just going, like, all week, it's been one disaster after another, after another. It's like, you know, that many years ago, I saw that movie called um, Evan Almighty. No, not Evan Almighty, Bruce Almighty, the first one. What was the first one? Bruce, wasn't it? Yeah, with Jim Carrey. And, you know, when he says, he, you know, he says, I feel like God's got a magnifying glass on me and I'm an ant, you know, you know. Well, I kind of felt like that this week. And that's a wrong thought to have. I'll confess that to you. I'm with family. I'm telling you the truth. But everything's been going so well. Everything took a sharp left turn, left turn. And I'm driving down the highway at 4.30 in the morning, you know, to, to, to meet up at Mel's place with her grandkids and take them to the airport. I had a tire blowout in the truck. In 4.30 in the morning, it's a great time to have a blowout. Got her off the highway, exit 75. It's still sitting there because whoever put the, the, the tire nuts on the truck were the wrong ones and we can't get the flaming things off. You know, so... So anyway, so, so we've been dealing with that. So I've been there three times, even with my boss, and we can't get the thing sorted out. You know, my dad's on dialysis, so he can't come in and sort it out. So we've got to try and come up with another plan. So when you guys leave today, I'll be going back down there to try and sort it out again. We've been helping Mel move house. And so, you know, you're dealing with pressures of the world, pressures from life, okay? And you start, the enemy is very, very cunning. He knows where to hit you. He knows where to reduce you to your weaknesses. And before you know it, you're falling down in other areas of your life that you know you've got victory over. Okay? If you go down to verses um, 16, it says, so how do we overcome this? How do we overcome this? How do we overcome the flesh? We do it by walking in the Spirit. How do we walk in the Spirit? We have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. See, when Jesus was on this earth, the disciples never prayed to Jesus. They prayed to the Father in Jesus' name, like Brett was sharing with communion. We Today, we pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. Right? Jesus tells us that's how to pray. But Jesus said in the book of John, he said that it's for your benefit that I go, because if I don't go, then the comforter or the helper won't come. And we know the comfort and the helper is the Holy Spirit. So we have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You see in a lot of Paul's writings in the, in the letters, he says, peace to be with you, the God and that Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. So we're called to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And that the word fellowship, the Greek word there is called koinonia. Now, how do you have fellowship with one another? How do you have fellowship with your spouse? How do you have fellowship with your kids? You talk to each other. You commune with each other. If I was sitting there having fellowship with Ian, I don't sit down and you know, catch up with Ian and just go, hey, mate, how you going? And, you know, and then that's it. We, if we want to have a relationship and a fellowship with other, we talk to each other, we communicate with each other. And that's how the Holy Spirit is. See, 
The Holy Spirit didn't has come in a bodily form. And I'm looking at him right now. Yeah. He's inside of you. When you became a Christian, the Holy Spirit came to live inside of you. When Jesus, when he came on this earth, he came in the form of a Jewish man, a Galilean man. But the Holy Spirit come and he dwells in you. So when I see Ian, I see Brett, I see Peter, Korean, Tish, everybody, the Holy Spirit's in you. He took residence in you. That's why your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And that's why we don't grieve the Holy Spirit. He has a mind and a will and emotions as well. We have to have the mind of the Spirit. And we tend to forget that. The Holy Spirit is not an active force. It's not an it. It's a person. And we, and we, and we, people, and it grieves me when people say, oh, thank you for the Holy Spirit. Look what, what it's doing or, or things like that. You know, that's disrespectful. I wouldn't call it blasphemy, but, you know, but it's, it, but the Holy Spirit is a person and he dwells in you. So the walk in the Spirit, church, is to fellowship with the Holy Spirit, to talk to him. We pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. And we can talk to the Holy Spirit every day. Just like the disciples did when they fellowshiped with Jesus when he was on this earth. We don't have that fellowship with Christ in the flesh, but we have the Holy Spirit who we can have fellowship with. Amen? Okay. So we look at this. So, so, so walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit. It's like the flesh is an it's like an itch that needs to be scratched. You know, when you have that desire of the flesh, you know, it feels good, you know, and, you, and it, just needs, it, it just needs to be itched. It needs to be scratched. You know, when you, you're a kid and, you know, and um, you've got an itch and you keep going like this and it feels so good and your parents are going, stop doing that because what are you going to do? You're going to make it worse. The loss of the flesh is exactly the same thing. It's an itch that you want to scratch. And it momentarily feels good, but if you keep doing it, what's going to happen? It's going to fester. It's going to get sore. It's going to get worse. We've got to learn, church, to walk in the Spirit and stop satisfying our desires of our flesh. Okay? So don't sit there and try and cast out the flesh or bind the flesh or stuff like that. We're not called to do that. Jesus said we're to crucify the flesh. Okay? Yep. Right? People and, and well many Christians and you sit there and they pray for deliverance from their flesh. Well, guess what? You're stuck with it until the day you're resurrected. Yeah. That's it. You're gonna it's you're gonna be dealing with your flesh until the day that you see Jesus face to face in your glorified body. All right. For the flesh lies against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you're led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now, we know what the works of the flesh is, but let's just go down to verse 22. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control against there is no such law. Now, church, and those who are in Christ have what? Crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Yeah. It's something that we do. You, you, you see people, they sit there and want to come to prayer lines and get in prayer. Now, I'm not talking against prayer, so please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But we're called to crucify the flesh and the passions and its desires. You see people there who want to turn around and get prayer and thinking that God's going to make, wave his magic wand and everything's going to be better. No, it's a process. It's called sanctification. We're going to be dealing with it for the rest of our life. We crucify the flesh. We did that when we got baptised. And then as we grow in the knowledge and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we will start realizing that we actually have a job to do, and that's us crucifying our flesh. Okay? Now, the thing is this, folks, is what we need to really take hold of is that 
Do we really want to see God move in our lives? Do you want to see God move in your life? Yeah. Do you? Yeah. Do you want to experience yeah. His power? Yeah. Do you want to experience His presence? There's something that I've learned a lot lately, and it ties into it, and that's walking in the fear of the Lord. No. What is the fear of the Lord? Proverbs 8. 13 says, the fear of the Lord is the hatred of evil and a perverse mouth and a wayward tongue that I hate. Pride and arrogance I also hate. The fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Church, let me tell you something. God is never going to come to a place where he's not given reverence and respect and due honor. He won't. We sit there and we cry and say, God, why aren't you moving in my life? Why aren't we doing this? Why aren't we doing that? If we had someone famous right here right now, a sports person or a famous movie star who's a Christian, and that, we'd all be sitting here, sitting here, like just on the edge of our seats, just listening to every word that he or she have to say. But sometimes the God who created the billions of galaxies, the trillions of stars, and knows them all by name, and knows all the numbers, of your hair, hair on your head. We treat him with such indifference. We turn up to church. I'm not saying this church, but in church in general. You've seen it. We've been around church life for a long time. But we have worship, and the worship could be technically amazing, the music and you know, the musicianship, the vocals and everything, but people are just sitting around like this, you know, standing or they're talking to each other or they'll be on their phones or, they, or, or whatever. This is a God who can destroy a, a, both our body and soul in hell. Yeah. This is a God, right, who gives us resurrection life. This is a God who created everything that we have. He created us. And we sin there and we stay there and we, we, we treat him with indifference. That's what my, my, my goal and my focus for this year is talking with someone who's in about when I lead worship, I don't care how many songs we do, I don't care if it's a new song or an old song, I don't care if we don't have worship or music or whatever. All I care about is us engaging with the whole mind, body, soul and spirit to give God the awe and reverence and respect that he truly deserves. Because if you do that, then we'll start seeing the most amazing things happen because he will want to come. He won't come when he's disrespected. No. It's like with, it's the same with a walk in our lives. We fall, we stumble, we get back up. If we sin, okay, it says in 1 John that we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And the thing is, he hears our thoughts, he hears, he hears our intents and motives of our heart. So nothing is hidden in his sight. We're open, we're exposed to him. He wants us to be completely surrendered. He knows we're going to screw up. He knows we're going to stumble. He knows that we're going to get ourselves entangled with sin again. But we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, that every time we fall, we can turn around and say, Lord, please forgive me, and he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yeah. All unrighteousness. He's faithful and he is just. In other words, he's just. He will discipline us and he'll teach us and he'll correct us. And sometimes that's a painful lesson. But it says in Hebrews in chapter 12 that we're not to despise that because he, he disciplines those whom he loves. We need to realize, this it's not to condemn, but it's to realize that we control how much please, how pleasing we are to God. Did you know that? He can't love us any more or love us any less because we're in Christ. But we control how pleasing we are to him. It's like, it's, like, it's like with your kids. You love your kids unconditionally, even though they can be rat bags. They can, they can sorry? They, 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 you, know, you know you love your kids unconditionally, you, you know. But they control how pleasing they are to you. Sometimes your kids, it can be so not pleasing. Right? True? All right? So true. And in James chapter 4, it talks about drawing near to God. Who draws near to God first? We do. 
See, I think we tend to realize that we leave everything on God's plate all the time when we when we forget the fact that we've got a responsibility. Yeah. Submit to God. Draw near to God, and He'll draw near to you. Who who draws first? We do. If we fall into sin, how do we ask for forgiveness? We do. We're dealing with areas of the flesh. How do we crucify the flesh? We do it. Mm -hmm. We learn by how do we do that? By learning to walk in the Spirit. We want to see God move in that church, then we need to walk in awe and reverence and fear of God. How do we do that? Who starts doing that? We do. It's not a workspace salvation church. And that's and, this, and I think this is where we get a lot of people get confused. We tend to think about it. It's all about the grace of God. Yes, it is about the grace of God. But grace doesn't make us inactive. It makes us more active with the right motive and the right foundation. You know, I this week I failed so much this week after a time, a season where I've been seeing victories in my life. And the, and the reality is, church, I've got no one else to blame but myself. It's a fact. I can sit there and blame shift and blame about what I've been through growing up and, and the trauma and stuff like that, and, and I'm not downplaying that. But we still have a responsibility to grow and mature in Christ. We have a responsibility. People have hurt you. People have betrayed you. Okay, they did it to Jesus. Okay. We need to walk in forgiveness. And when we walk in forgiveness, we walk in the fear of God. We walk in the love of God. I, I just said, I just, this, like I said, this week was the worst week I've had in a long time. And I failed so many times. And normally, like lately, it's just like you can throw stuff at me and I can it'll just wash off me and things will be good, but 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 things change this week. And sometimes you've got to go back and think, what, where did I stop? And I can tell you where I stopped, where it went wrong for me. I allowed myself to get busy. I allowed myself to be um, overwork, take on too much commitments, and my fellowship and my time with the Lord and the Holy Spirit just dwindled down and dwindled down and dwindled down and dwindled down. Whose fault was that? Mine. Mine. We need to walk and have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And when we truly walk and have fellowship with the Holy Spirit, we start walking in the fear of the Lord. When we start walking in the fear of the Lord, we start walking in the fellowship with the Holy Spirit. It's, it's, they go together. You can't separate it. We can't grieve the Holy Spirit anymore. Especially in the times when we come to church and we want to fellowship and we want to worship him. We can't do it with indifference, but we've got to do it with such an awe and reverence and respect because he demands it. He demands it. It's just it's amazing how people, if we have, like I said before, have someone famous come here, we sit there and go, oh, wow, well, you know. But the creator of the heaven and earth is here. Our lives are in his hand. And we don't give him the fear and reverence and respect like we should. That needs to change. That needs to change. Start forgiving. Start walking in forgiveness. Little steps. Start fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you. It's fellowship. The Bible says fellowship of the Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit always points to Jesus and Jesus always points to the Father. So that's so once you start doing that, God is honored, God is respected, and He moves in your life. I know this is a bit of a weird message this morning, but I had no I allowed myself to be so busy. And I don't love, I don't like that. But I just said, Lord, I just I know what I want to say. I don't know how to construct it. I'm just relying on you. I hope that you got something out of this. I like to be more prepared. Sounds like you were prepared. Yeah, yeah I, I hope so. But, folks, it's up to you. 
If you want to, you want to see him move, walk in his fear and reverence. It's not a spirit of fear. That's different. God didn't give us a spirit of fear. He wants us to come to him. But a holy fear and reverence and respect to the King of kings and to the Lord of lords who died and gave himself for us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Father, we God just... Is awesome. God is awesome. Amen, Corinne. Amen. He's awesome. And he's gracious, gracious, merciful. His mercies are new every morning. And we can come to the holy and holies at any time. Father, we just thank you for this morning. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful time together. Lord, I just thank you for my family here. Lord, I thank you that I don't have to hide anything. Lord God, I, I can just be so transparent with them. Father, we just thank you for your sweet presence that was here this morning. Lord, I just pray that, Lord God, that we'll just take what we've learned and the time that we had in worship and the beautiful communion messages that we've had, Lord, that we'll take it out to us into the world, Lord God, and we'll be able to be light shining in a world that's so dark. Father, we just love you. Lord, teach us as this church, the Ark Church, that we have a reputation of a church that truly fears God, a church that truly fellowships with the Holy Spirit, a church that has a reputation that your spirit moves and it's tangible and signs and wonders do happen. Father, we just draw close to you and we thank you. You're so awesome to us. You're so awesome to us, Father, and we love you. And no matter how many times we fall down, the righteous may fall down seven times, but he gets back up. And, Lord, we just get back up and we say, Father, thank you for the blood that cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Thank you for the unbroken fellowship, Father God. And we thank you that we are joined with one spirit to the Lord Jesus Christ, and nothing can, can separate us from that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen.